we are live. We are live. We are live. Um, I believe we are live here. Yay. Uh, I have my guests. I think it's 3.30. Um, 3.30 Vancouver time. So, hello people. Welcome to Exclusive Chats. And this month, I have the amazing Shade. Um, Shade is a songwriter, she's an engineer. She likes photography, she loves traveling. Um, that's one of her, or one of many of her interests. And um, we'll be hearing all the juicy, 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 juicy today. Um, so sit down, relax. Um, it's gonna be an amazing time. Just waiting for our guests to come in on the show and we are good to go. We'll be really, really good to go. Good, we'll be good, good, good to go. Oh, 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 oh. How's our month been? I hope November has been great for you. Um, because November has been great here. It's been, the weather has been very funny. It's been very sincere. The weather has been very funny. It's been cold, then it becomes warm, then it snows. Um, yeah, very, 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 very funny weather that you wouldn't expect for November. Then it was Black Friday, and Black Friday was interesting. Um, last month, we had Iron Man, and part of the things we talked about was music promotion and talked about how people can um, make things better for themselves before you start paying that huge amount to somebody to um, <clears throat> get your song or your artwork or whatever promoted. One of the things he advised is start with what you have so if you have a facebook page or an instagram page or whatever page you have start start the promotion there so you are the ones you're the one that's going to start your own promotion before you give someone else because um and there are different platforms like for music distribution there's tune core so you pay tune core um it's about eleven dollars per year and they put your song on different platforms, about 10 to 12 platforms. And that helps you as a single or as an individual to um, promote your own song without meeting any third party physically, right? So, and you're not paying 100,000 or 200,000. Some people pay as high as 2 million, 5 million, and I mean Naira, and some paying dollars to get their songs promoted just because they want um, bigger platforms to have those songs promoted for them. So it is very important that we, as people, start small. Um, start small, start with your Facebook page, send to your friends on WhatsApp, send to your friends on Instagram. Let people know what you do so that by the time you're giving to a promoter, the promoter knows, okay, I will not charge you so much because you've done this on so, so, and so. What we'll do is just put this, um, put your music or put your hard work or whatever it is on, um, let's say blogs. Yes, so blogs also carry it. And the big, the, the good thing is try and, go for the blogs that are have the very big name so let me use an example so le let's imagine that you put it on amen radio or um, praise world radio or gospel entertainment radio the good thing about it is that when you put it on those very big um platforms smaller um blogs blogs that are just starting up will always pick up whatever it is that's trending on that page and put it on their own place so in other words, you're paying to get promoted for your own stuff. And you're paying one person, but the person, because the person's platform is very big, you can always send it out. And now on Instagram, there are a lot of comedians that actually get paid so they can sponsor. You can do a sponsored ad where they'll play your song and walk, walk your song around a skit. And when they walk your song around the skit, they're going to make sure that they get your song going. So it's not like, oh, you, um, it's not like you're, 
let me give an example. It's not like you're going to get your song on their platform and you will not get that coverage that you need. So one of the good things about it is when you put your songs on their own platform, the smaller blogs or the blogs that are just coming up will always pick up your blog. And once they pick it, your, your song or whatever it is, um, and once they pick, and once they pick up your song or pick up whatever it is that you are doing, it just goes straight to them saying, okay, you know what? We are going to, um, pick this from, let's say, Gospotainment. So Gospotainment goes and puts it on, let's say, not just OK. And so, all, yeah, not, not just OK, Reverb Nation, those small, small places, they are all free. So you can utilize that. Well, that's one of the things that I know we learned from um, Iron Man last month, that when it was talking about, um, what do they call it? When it was talking about, uh, what do they call this place? da 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 da, -da. When I was talking about promoting your own song, yes. So another thing is blogs. So you can always give blogs. You can always give even comedians. Yes, I was using the example of comedians. So they walk around. Oh, it was cold. <laughs> so they walk around your um, platform, whatever it is that you're promoting, you want to promote. So let's say it's an artwork or let's say it's a dance or let's say it's a song. So they walk around it. So when you do that, you give yourself, I think some of them collect as low as 10,000 Naira for those that are collecting Naira. And for those, um, and for those that, Waiting. yeah, sorry people. So for those that also do, um, promotions through celebrities. So some people pay some celebrities to, um, do those stops for you. So promote your song. So let's imagine, um, let, let me use the example of, let's say, um, let me, let me use a very big example. Let's say Taylor Swift. So you're paying Taylor Swift to promote your brand or promote your song. And she's riding her car and she's like, oh my God, I'm enjoying this jam. I'm just using like an international pop star as an example. But, um, there are local ones like in Nigeria, here in Canada that you can always give, even if you're in the gospel scene. Okay. You can say, okay, who are the top gospel, um, that have influence in Nigeria or in Canada, whatever it is, and you send it to them and okay, you know what? What we'll do is we're going to make sure that we get your song played on our let's imagine on our platform or or as I'm driving. So what I'm gonna do is I make sure that um I put your song on what I'm doing. So it's very important that um if you would just join us on exclusive chat, this is exclusive chat um with on Amen Radio, I, so on Amen Radio, I'm so used to Life Matters. I know I did read that. Um, this is excuse me, chat to Anna Dedere, and this is the November edition. So one of the good things about it is um, people get to come on on the show and what they call it. Um, share their life experiences, share what they do. They're the ones that do all the background work in music. Some of them are artists themselves. Some of them do the, both the background work and being artists. So we always try to walk around both ways. It's not like um, we're going to bring, some, bring you on or bring someone on the show. No, we, we, what we, we, people we bring on the show are people that all always do all this background work and they're they're very good at what they do. They're real craftsmen. So you sit down, relax, and um, yes, we're going to start the show very soon. Um, I'm going to be having my guest, and she'll be sharing a couple of things with us. And um, yeah, it's, it's going to be an amazing time. So it's, it's very... Um, it's very important for those that are also trying to step out of their comfort zone, probably just trying to start off and you're trying to, um, let, let me imagine that you're just coming into the, the gospel scene or just coming to the, the entertainment scene or the arts or craft scene. What you do is to make sure that you're reaching out to people that have been there before, right? People that have been there before and let them help you. In, and 
help you influence or be part of impact your your own um your own music or whatever it is so yes we're moving over to um Anua Dedere and um my page my personal page and um I'll, I'll probably come back on the show once i get to talk with my guests so yes just like how we do life matters on life matters page my my page is always like the okay what's up kind of thing so yeah we are back on exclusive chat welcome to exclusive chat and and this is the november edition my guest is shade awele um awele sorry yeah so her middle name is awele and she um she uses a middle name as her well a middle name has her a stage name part of a stage name so um so it's it's interesting have you been how's november um what you could how's november going i'm sure that god has been so good to you and god has been so good to me i cannot i cannot i cannot underestimate god's grace god has been so merciful um he has been so fantastic glorious hallelujah yeah sorry i can be a little bit extra <laughs> So yes, um, it's amazing how God works because um, I remember how I met Shade. So I have this friend that um, is a project Canada and was telling me about a song he was working on, and I'm like, okay, what song? So I listened to it. It was like a, it was like a page. Hello. Well, hello there. <laughs> you know what happened? Okay. Instagram is special. It sent it as a as a, as a message, message request. request. That's why I didn't see you. They need Jesus. <laughs> How are you doing? That's good. It's good. Day? How's yours going? Uh, do you want me to answer it? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> so I do answer it because I think I just I got up early in the morning, went mm. to another church, then from there came home, then been in the library, then yeah. So I mm. almost forgot. Wow. I'm like, wait, I have Shadi for four thirty. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, Shadi would just say, "That's hilarious." You chose four thirty, yeah. I'm like, I was like, uh. <laughs> How, how was church? How was it? How's everything going? It was, it was good. Church was great. Um, yeah, no, I had a very early like morning too, where I had to be up at like. 7.45 ish I was like so no thing I was in the congregation praising Jesus hmm? as a the line just like <laughs> huh? what? the <laughs> line went I didn't get off. to my church or... what did you say? can you hear me now? yes I can hear you let's meet Shad what do you do um and we know you have based in vancouver you can sit all over your page the beautiful place <laughs> of vancouver so so tell mm -hmm. us tell us more about you what what should or what should we know about you that we don't know wow something about me that people don't know mm -hmm. uh, hmm as in in terms of like career in terms of anything Anything. Anything. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. I've lived in, I think I've lived in three provinces. Wow. Let's, yeah, I've lived in three provinces, two countries, and how many cities? What? Lagos, Cap Hamilton, <laughs> and wow. five cities. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Yes. That's, that's a movement. I, I have moved around. <laughs> that's a movement. I can't even count. I think it was Yo. a couple of days ago. Someone was telling me that how many, how many, how many states in Nigeria have have I been to, and I'm, like, I think about eight or nine, and I'm like, I should, I should nine. Wow. Yeah. So I, I that's I've been actually to amazing. Nine. Please don't That's go like to uh, most that place called. Just avoid place. the north. <laughs> Actually, I was back. in the north. So I've been to Yola. I've been to oh. I've been to Adamawa State. I've been to Kogi State. I've been to Abuja. Yeah. I've been to Lagos. I've been to 
Oshun Oyo Ogun. Mm. Uh, wow. Uh, Ondo. Yes, um, what else? Wow. You can place my head around the last one, but yeah. That so, is impressive. Yeah. But here, I think I've only been to... I've only been to Toronto, Calgary, Saskatoon, mm. and Edmonton. Yeah. Oh, we okay. to, yeah, well, not within our butter, but within our butter, um, I've been to Velgrove, I've been to Fort Saskatchewan, and yeah, I'm here. Mm. So I've, I've been around. I almost went to Fort yeah. Mac, but I couldn't go. The drive was too There's long. nothing to see in Fort Mac. <laughs> <laughs> You weren't missing anything, I can tell you that much. Well, we, my, my boss had a case, yeah? So he wanted us to go, and I'm like, five hours. I would leave mm. the house like as early as 4.35. I'm like, mm. wow. 4.35 in the morning. Yeah. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, 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 we can't that. But yeah, there's nothing to see. Shush me here. about me. Yeah, <laughs> so let, let's start. So last month, we're talking with someone that, and, and that, I want to start from there with you, because I know that... Mm. Um, you also well i should not say that so let i will ask you so, so that it, it, it's more or less coming from you so um do you produce or someone else produces for you someone else produces for me okay so but you do do, you do your vocals yourself yeah i do my vocals myself for covers the covers that i put up on instagram and things like that i do those myself Okay. Using Garage Band, very like basic, but yeah. then actual singles, actual music I put out, I I work with other producers. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about was one of the things that my guest last month talked about was mm. promotion. So how do you mm. here in Canada? How do you promote music? Yo, like it's it's been a it's been a learning curve for sure okay. because. I find that these days it's almost like it grows. So there's, there's the, there are two ways you can go about it. You can either choose to go based on, okay, this is my following. This is my social influence. I'm going to take advantage of my social influence and this is light on. Okay. So I'm going to take advantage of my social influence and hope for the best, let them know, hey, this is my new music, and then see where that goes. Yeah. And then there's also like a formal way of actually trying to use Facebook ads, things like that. Yeah. So I kind of do a bit of both. Okay. Like I would, I, would, um, I would put out the song and then give it a, a bit for at least the people who follow me to have some time to, to look at it, to look it up, things like that. And then I use Facebook ads okay. stuff like or, or Instagram ads, which I guess yeah. is under Facebook. Okay. Um, I haven't really gotten into, I'm trying to get into radio to um, okay. get it played on, say, CBC and things like that. I've okay. been told that you can literally just send out an email and be like, hey, CBC, could you consider my song oh, really? and stuff like that? Yeah, I've been told that, but I've also been told from other people that you need to have a radio, uh, like a radio kit. Oh, and it's okay. like a certain number the song has to be a certain number of minutes so i think it just depends yeah yeah so just like in nigeria um i know that they, they do about they can only play your song for about 30 seconds to one minute on radio really? and, and talk about it so they're talking they're going back and forth with it depending right it depends on each like now that radio is like everywhere in nigeria now yeah. people are playing complete songs and they're mm. dancing to it and making videos out of it and making skits out of it so i i think i get so the the radio kids will be like okay so it depends on each radio so a, yeah. a radio station can say they can only take your song for one minute so yeah. you are the one that will probably trim your song into that one minute just like how if you do like a full dance to something on instagram you want to mm. put out one minute that you really like that part of the song so right. where the message is so like if i want to put my if i want to put my song out there i probably take the first verse and the chorus and just cut right. it and send it be, 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 because they won't play the full um Oh, ah, yeah. that's interesting. So for most of them, that's what do they do that in Canada too? I'm not too sure. Um, mm. bulk of my bulk of my following has been my like promotion when it comes to promotion, mm -hmm. and um, I also do Facebook ads. I think I've just done it once. 
mm. right? And I said on my Facebook page. So my, mm. my Facebook, um, the music and media. So where I post all my media stuff and radio stuff and all that. So that's mm. the only one I've promoted. Other ones have just been organic. So even my Instagram page, as bulk of it has been organic growth. For that's myself. awesome. So yeah. like in the last, in the last six months, probably it has increased with about a thousand followers and that's awesome and it, i didn't do the ads so for me mm. was, i always think about the all and and people say okay the yeah. algorithm shifts and this this and that that so sometimes instagram is good mm. but i always i always still prefer that if you need to like pay um now when people are paying like and i was saying this a couple of minutes ago like on instagram now they're paying inf influencers to listen to their songs well yeah like, exactly like, lot, so. yeah i find that yeah it's like it's kind of like you have to wait i the what i've noticed though is there's almost no point promoting the music in your region so if i choose to promote a song i wouldn't promote it in vancouver i wouldn't promote it in in canada even for the most part i'll, I'll promote it in the states i'll promote it like I'll, my target audience would be outside of canada because the people in Canada are already seeing it. They're already they're already reposting it. So the thing is this. So because you don't want to limit your so one of the things that I notice also and um is that people don't if your if your song is limited to a circle, it will just stay there. So yeah. it will look like the same sort of people are listening to your song. Right. So when you when you advertise, what I kinda do is I make it a tiny amount per day, but I make the reach wider. Oh, when you say a tiny amount, as in a, a tiny stretch of a so, city. So, so, no. So, this is how it is. So, let's say I pay $50 mm. to promote my song. Mm. If I pay $50, I say I, wanna, I want that $50 for 20 days. Mm. So, that's about $2 something. But that $2 something per day is going to UK, US, um edmonton vancouver ontario so i use a lot of cities and countries for the mm. coverage so that when one person picks it the algorithm kind of links it to another person that is in that same place and they right. can view it every time but if i block out where i stay because at the end of the day you, we still want to shine our lights where we stay of course that. of course yeah, yeah. So, so for me i i, I kind of always feel like I know my friends and people that are around me will always repost and whatever. Yeah. But it's also important that when we put it out there, out of our reach and even within our reach, you see that people that are not your friends will just pick it or will just repost True. it. So yeah. it's a 50-50 thing that... <laughs> yeah, and I think it's... Does. Yeah, and there's a lot of trial and error to it too, I find. Mm -hmm. It's like... Because the first time I did it, it was it was just Canada. I think actually I made it auto automatic. Okay. So my okay. guess is that it was just Canada for the most part. Yeah. And the second time I did it when I did Nigeria, now it was Nigeria and the States, I think I did. Okay. And 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 maybe the UK, maybe. Okay. And I found that it was wider, like a wider yeah. spectrum. Yeah. And a wider reach. And I'm like, okay, is this because of population or is it because now I'm targeting a different... It's because you're targeting a different place and it's not wider. So for me, I include cities. So even right. if I'm doing the all of Ontario, I put Toronto underneath so that even right. if the person in um, Hamilton says it, the person in Ontario is already in, in sync and already knows. And it also makes your... Um, oh, what do you call this thing? So you know how the ads pop up? Mm. It makes the ad pop up more. So people in those regions can see your ad. Oh. Yeah, so that's, what, that's one thing that I noticed too. That one of my friends in Port Harcourt, because I put in Port Harcourt, because one day um, in Port Harcourt Radio played the song. So I was like, mm. oh, I didn't send it to Port Harcourt. So I noticed that when ah. I did the Facebook ad, a radio station in Port Harcourt, someone that was there saw the pop up and was like, oh, they like the song and they played it without me sending it to them. So wow. my lawyer friend in Portaco now called me and said, oh, I saw this, this pop and he screamed on it to me. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I had to go wow. on Instagram and like, oh, Portaco family, this, this, this. So yeah. it, was, it, was oh, fun. Wow. it was fun. Yeah. So it just, it just so increases awesome. your coverage. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So hmm. I can see you're an engineer. So how did the engineer come into music? <laughs>
<laughs> man they definitely don't combine each other right now if i was like some sort of <laughs> they're so different if i was like an audio engineer or something then yeah i could yeah. be like this kind of relation <laughs> but it's like i i mean on the day to day i work with architects i work with you know my my industry is called building science so i went to school okay. for for civil engineering okay. I, to be fair i actually wanted to go to school for architecture Okay. But it's such a crazy competitive program, and mm -hmm. one thing led to another. Yeah, oh, it's crazy. They don't, they don't really let people in unless like you have some crazy portfolio. And I didn't have a strong portfolio at the time, oh, so I, I couldn't even blame them for uh, giving me an engineering program instead. So yeah. I chose civil engineering because I was like, okay, at least I'll still get to work with architects and stuff like that. Yeah. And the funny thing is that my industry, building science, a lot of architects end up going to building science. So oh. it's, kind of, it's kind of a funny thing, like how, somehow I so still ended still up in that. Yeah, still meet each other a lot. So um, yeah, there hasn't really been, sometimes I think about that and you know, I wish there was a way that the two of them could be married together, but not really. They're transferable skills, like project management skills, um, time management skills, um, communication skills, dealing with clients, dealing with people. All of those things I find are definitely helping me as I try to build on my own path and my own career and things like that. Mm. Um, but the actual work itself is quite different. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So how was how was growing up like? Did you grow up in like a music environment or mm. or how was growing up like for you? Yeah, it was heavy, heavily music oriented, um, awesome. which was which was quite nice. Like um, my my dad was probably a massive influence with that. Like he would constantly play all types, all genres, well not all genres. They were always clean, but he would jazz. He was big on jazz. He was big Ooh, on. I know. <laughs> I love jazz. <laughs> yeah, like he was big on it, big on jazz, big on gospel. Nice. Um, like every as songs are coming out, you know, Nigeria, we don't we don't waste every time. Week. What like <laughs> once new music is coming out, no matter where it's coming out, we know about it. Can it? Yeah. Be? So yeah, he was he was on top of it all the time, and. Uh, he sometimes in the car, like as he's driving, he'll talk to, he used to talk to my siblings and he'll be like, oh, can you hear the sound of like this thing? Can you hear this? Thing? And oh I would just be like listening, like very excited, like, oh my God, I can hear it too. And like <laughs> that sort of, that was definitely part of, of the interest. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, being in the Nigerian home too, every morning we would sing. Uh, <laughs> you got to be home for every Nigerian. <laughs> I think that's typical for like every Nigerian home. Yo. You're either doing either five minute daily devotion or you're doing one hour more like, devotion. Yo, <laughs> yo, shout out wow. to those devotions. So like, yeah, we'll wake up, we'll sing. Um, and all this time, actually, I didn't actually know that I could sing. Oh, okay. Till, um, what happened? I think I was playing, I was just playing around on the keys one day and my dad came so the rumor was like, hey, do you know that you can sing? Like, he was actually the one that pointed it out to me. And before oh. that, I just thought that, oh, I was just, you know, humming around <laughs> kind of thing. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely been a huge part uh, of our lives. And it's been encouraged a lot. Like, my brother makes beats. Well, um, nice. my, my, thanks. My other brother went to school for media production. Like, everyone has some sort of musical... Music influence yeah that's, or, that's, or creative influence yeah. that's that's very nice because i know that bulk of of music starts either from church or from family yeah yeah like, everybody sings in my house um yeah. so it's it's always i think it's it's more or less like people just making sure that when they're in that line you just take advantage of that that old music thing when it's yeah. going for you so Music. So I'm, this is the engineering. You went to do architecture, <laughs> then music. So yeah. how did photography come into play? <laughs> That's a good point. Photography came to play. Hmm. That probably started a little bit in university. I would see the photographers in university. I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Like, I like what you guys, I like what you guys see and how you 
take a photo you imagine somebody take a photo and then put it up and things like that so but i i didn't plan to do anything with it at that time i always had a camera and i always liked taking pictures but i never really thought to do anything with it but then when i started fully working when i graduated um i then started taking some courses on photography because I didn't really know what to do in my spare time yet. I was still figuring things out with like, okay, what do I want to do with my music? So I was like, okay, I'll take some photography courses. And I just loved it. Like, I just enjoyed it. I mean, I, it's definitely evolved. I would say what I still enjoy taking the most is probably landscape, abstracts, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's definitely been evolving in different ways. So yeah, that was just kind of like a way to keep my creative mind going mm. uh, and take advantage of, of what, of what I see, what's around me, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Because I, I, I remember that I was, I think I was talking to, I think I was talking about Canada and not having like so many vocalists and not having mm. so much music. Like I know that they love jazz, they love country. Yeah. We go rock. Um, but that's it. Yeah. And for me, it, those things are moods. Like, mm. black, I'm black gospel any day. I am... Yes. <laughs> I'm rock any day, but it depends on the rock, though. Right. Uh, um, I'm thinking I'm jazz, but it depends on my mood. So I don't want to jazz and I'm tired. I was, <laughs> so if, for me, it depends on each person. I think the only Canadian artist I really loved for the longest of time since when I was in my first year in university was Michael Bublé. And oh. I just... It was just a sweetheart. So... I didn't even know I was going to travel to Canada, but I was like, if this guy is single, I must marry. <laughs> 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 then I think a year after I found out that he was married with kids. Like, okay. <laughs> so for me, I think I was having that oh. conversation with Saji and it was like, oh, there's Shadi. I'm like, okay. So oh, he sent wow. me your group. He sent me your group, um, Healing. The Healing Sound. The healing sound. So I yeah. went through it. I'm like, this is actually really nice. Like, oh, <laughs> this Canada. Wow. So that was how I knew. So when mm. when you finished your first project and you were like, oh, thank you, then I'm like, oh, okay. So this is the shot. I had to now link everything up. I'm like, oh, this is really really nice. So yeah. for you, what what would you say has been the the biggest challenge so far in court? Like when it comes mm. to doing music here in Canada. Oof. Um. I would say the big one of the biggest challenges has been finding finding the group of people who appreciate the music mm. because like you said there are different genres and country is huge here like I remember like when I was in Alberta I was like wow Calgary loves they love country, they love music. country. yeah but no mess around so it's like it's a small group of people who have an open mind to other other styles of music yeah. And even with the type of stuff that I was writing in the healing cell and, and, and sort of moving on to some, some independent projects as well, there's still somewhat in that similar genre where it's like, you, you have to also love urban music. You have to also love jazz, gospel, that type of stuff to actually appreciate it. If you don't, you would like, you know, so It'd that's too abstract in your mind. Yeah. You will listen to it and be like, Oh, that's nice. But like, it won't really resonate with you and you won't really feel like, Oh, I really want to follow this person's journey. So I found yeah. that it's taken a while to find people who actually appreciate it and who actually want to see where it's going to go. Mm. Um, yeah, that's definitely been one of the things. Initially, one of my issues also was finding uh, producers, like people to to collaborate with. Because I'm like, wow, that one is, is also a tough one. Personally, I, I would still say that I haven't still found. I'll use that word found because um, the contemporary world is kind of different from the Nigerian kind of style. And the Nigerian right. Nigerians sound not not talking about Afrobeat, but even when you're singing contemporary, um, I'm I'm big on music is not rigid, like music flows. Mm-hmm. So for me, I can take your song and put it into Fuji or put it into um, reggae, just because I want to change the tune of what it is. But right. the flip side of it is who is going to listen to it just yeah, like you who's said, your audience it's, it's the audience so for me even when it comes to promotion even when it comes to as 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 funny as makeup will sound like mm. there's a way 
they do makeup and how we do makeup like it's it's very very different because it's more or less like you are doing um what they call it you are trying to like make sure that everything is filled everything is looking great yeah they are trying to see oh you know what just use very tiny bit, like <laughs> <laughs> tiny bit it's like bring it i'll just use white powder <laughs> oh my face yeah so I, I think that the thing about the whole production is just finding someone that understands your personal sound. Because once the person understands yep. it, the person can drive with you. Absolutely. Whatever way you want or whatever idea that comes to your mind. Yeah, I'm so not... picky with that. And, and that might be the other problem too because it's, it's not that they aren't producers. It's just not everyone will understand the value and, okay, this is how it should sound. You have to be, you have to be familiar with those genres to know mm what to do yeah you know? yeah and I, and I think when you look at when you now see the very very good ones the cost kind of makes you feel like in my head i first calculated to naira and i'm like um okay so if you're really good and you're asking for two thousand dollars and i know someone that's super good i will collect the same amount in naira uh bye-bye <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what goes through my head because at the, at the end of the day you're not just looking mm. at the producer's profile you're looking at the profile behind the producer so okay let, let's imagine Kobam's produces a song for you mm. soon it soon. has a coverage like Kobam's in, 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 in the name has a coverage now mm -hmm. the person has his own coverage so for me I'm like is a pain like it, it's it's just it's just kind of logic in my in mm. my head of some sort to to think that people actually would really love to work with people that are really good and a couple of things i've gotten from one two three four producers and like working in nigerians are very difficult because they don't like hearing the truth and i'm like wow Why do you do and they're like when you sound a particular way and they're trying to tell you like reduce your tone like Let's imagine mm -hmm. like the H factor or your mm. is a soft song like this sings my song. It should mm. be soft. But the moment you're aggressive and he comes mm. from part of a producer like, oh, this thing sounds very hard, you flip it and say, Oh, it's because they don't understand our music. And it's not. There's some simplicity to music that people just Absolutely. Don't. Sometimes you need to, to be able to appreciate that, yeah. Yeah, and people just don't yeah. appreciate. So so at the end of the day, it's it's I think there are two sides to it where people mm. have cost, people have money issues when it comes to like funding for their projects and mm. doing videos and doing this, doing that. And the other side to it is the producer too doesn't want to run out of ideas trying to work with you and trying to make you understand what he's trying to say. So yeah it's, it's it's so so what's vancouver like like i've never been there but i learned it is mm. like the abuja of nigeria <laughs> i guess you can call it that and all that mm. vancouver is nice like to be honest it took me a while to settle here because people are polite but they're not friendly so like your first yeah <laughs> i know it's weird people are polite but they're not friendly so it's like they'll meet you they'll talk to you everything but then by the time you want to follow up, maybe they say, okay, you guys are going to have like a hangout or something. By the time you want to follow up, a lot of times people are flaky. Next thing you know, you will hear from the person. <laughs> I think I'm guilty of that. <laughs> because I've had someone try to reach out and, I, and I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. Oh, me too, no problem. Just text me. And I'm like, I see the text and I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you should come and join them. <laughs> I am joined them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's one of the things I noticed. So that made it a little difficult at first for me to uh, settle in. But then eventually I started making friends, started meeting people. Um, so yeah, it's a lot whew, It's a lot better now. Like if it was still the same way it was last year, I don't even know if I'll still be, if I'll still be in Vancouver because that was tough. I was like, ah, where are the humans? And of course, we don't have a lot of, you know, our ebonies, our, our chocolate skins. So whenever I see like a black person on the street or something, it's, it's a, <laughs> I have this like smile on my face. I see you. And you know how you, you know the funny thing is when, when you see another black person working and you're like, and the person, the person's already shining their teeth even before you open your mouth. Yes. And you're like, oh, Papa. And you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> In my 
mind. I'm like, brethren, brethren. Yo, it's like I see you. It's so funny, you know. Cause, oh my god, man, the little things I, like I that. I thought I was the only one that had that feeling. I, I didn't know it was. <laughs> I didn't know it was everywhere. Wow, it's that's... everywhere. It's those of us on the west side, because Toronto at least there's a lot more black oh, people. Please. That's like, like you see, yeah, <laughs> like you see black people everywhere, everywhere. It's like yes, this feels amazing. Oh my god! So, so when when you look at when you look when you want to write a typical song, what mm. what what inspires each song? Wow, um, a lot of things to be honest. Um, life experiences wanting to connect with the people who would be listening to it. But I'll say mainly probably life experiences. Like 90% of the songs I write are, are based on how I feel or mm. based on like I'm drawing from my own emotions. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Collaborations, probably still the same thing. Yeah. For the most part. So yeah. What, what inspires, you said what inspires me, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it would definitely be that. Um, sometimes in a moment, I could be like, oh, wow, I could write about that. And then I try to write about it. Sometimes it could be a beat that inspires it as well. Okay. I might not, I might not quite know what I want to sing about yet, but once I hear the beat, I'm like, okay. And then the lyrics start coming. Okay. Uh, but they're generally life experiences, yeah. So, so when... Do you ever have writer's block? And when you have it, what, what helps you through that process? Mm. Yes, I have writer's block. I remember one of my most vivid memories of that was when I was writing a song called Sela. I put it out like two years. It's been two years now. Wow, time flies. Uh, it's been two years now. When I started writing the song, it came in pieces. Like, wow. I think it was the chorus that came first. And I was like, okay, now I have the chorus. What do I, what do, I do? Like, how do I figure out the mm -hmm. rest of it? Um, and I was completely frozen. Everything I would try to write, I didn't like the way it sounded. Mm. So I, I just took a break. Like, I find that sometimes when you, when you try to, like, meditate on this thing, like, I must get it, I must get it. It just, yeah, putting pressure, it just gets so much, so much worse. Yeah. So I just took a break. Like, just took my mind off it. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just not going to focus on it right now. I'm just going to do other mm. things. Mm -hmm. Um. Then after a while, maybe like after two weeks, I had like one verse. So I wrote that one down. Mm. I was like, okay, now I have a verse. I have a chorus. <laughs> How am I going to finish this song? Mm. So then I just prayed. I was like, God, like, yo, this song, this song means a lot to me. I like where it's going, but I... And I don't know how to, to put it together, like to put the pieces. So help, help me out kind of thing. Mm. And, I, and I left it again. So it's like sometimes we... We just need to have those moments of silence to, to figure out. It's a scary feeling because mm. at first it creates this anxiety of, oh my gosh, have I become a bad writer? Do I not know what to do anymore? <laughs> Has uh, my career ended? Wow. <laughs> Before it started. So, so what comes to your mind when uh, you kind of excited about the song? Then you're like, oh my God, I just wrote a song. And you give someone that probably is a producer or a friend and the person just yeah. gives you that oh, this is the song, and that kind of, that kind of <laughs> comment that makes you just, <laughs> and you just crawl into your channel, like, you know what, I, I think I just take a pause, <laughs> no, right for a minute. What comes to your mind when that, that happens to you? I tell the producer, you, you got to write to yourself. <laughs> nah, <it's not> so <laughs> Do it yourself! <laughs> That's a very nice for me. I think what comes to my head is when I was kind of like there was a time I, I worked, it was like a season of writing, and I just wrote probably right. three or four songs at once. Mm. And I, I sang it and I sent it to someone, and the person's like, Um, I think the melody here, the this is, I said, You know what, leave it. <laughs> I'm like, Leave it. I'm not even. And I, and I noticed one thing that oh. when you try so hard to force it, it won't work. Yeah. When you try so hard to get people's impute and they kind of change the mood of the song, you just have that disconnect. I don't know if it's just me, but when I give yeah. someone a, let's, let's a line of um, broom is swift, um, lights is this or something, 
Mm. And the person kind of just gives me that. And you can change that broom to the room is <laughs> a disconnect in my head. And, mm. and it makes it go, go to uh, my next question where it's like, what happens to songwriters out there that do all that work and they write for people and they do this? And I was reading someone's story where it was Brenda Adigwe and she was talking mm. about when she went to back up for a particular superstar and um, mm. the person called for a for one they couldn't get to the venue until three because of traffic yeah mm. and she said when she they got there they she didn't even acknowledge them she came with the dancers um after coming in with the dancers why do i feel like i know who this might be <laughs> I, do, I don't know if you know the person but let me just give you my story <laughs> so the person came down, did everything, and took the dancers mm. back to her house. But the backup, she didn't. So she left them at the venue at 2 a.m. And they had to find wow. one tiny place to sleep till 5 a.m. and head home. So she was just talking wow. about her, her, her story and saying that, like, where you're coming from or who is saying they are this or that doesn't really matter mm. when you are going for your destiny, where you're, when you're going mm. for this is what I want to do, this is where I'm going to be, or this is who mm -hmm. I want to be when it comes to this time. I think a lot of people just, they're just in the space of, well, Vancouver people don't like me. You know what? Let me just face some engineering and photography. And mm. it just it just deters you from that bigger picture of who they see. I know bulk of people might not even know you're an engineer. Like, probably maybe this week. Absolutely. Know, you get it. <laughs> don't make a lot of people know. But for me, I, I just see it as where you're going is more important than what's yeah. stopping you. And, and I think that's one thing I always try to, encourage songwriters because they're always in the shadows like i don't yeah. know do you write songs for people um have i written any song for people not really i mean i would love to okay. if i'm given the opportunity because i i love mm. songwriting mm. but i don't think i've officially oh well i've done like dedication songs okay if they say oh we want to do like this dedication this appreciation i've done songs like that okay so i guess in a sense i've written for people but not officially okay yeah yeah but no i i completely agree with what you're saying because it's such a sensitive thing when you write a song and somebody gives you some pushback whether it's pushback on the melody pushback on the lyrics mm -hmm. especially if you're writing from your own experience nice. because you're you're hoping, <laughs> you're hoping that's all connected to you and you're like ah, that's and in my mean. mind i'm like is this your experience <laughs> is it, is it experience? <laughs> you know and it's and you're so right because everyone's going to have an opinion on how it should sound yeah. and, oh you should have done this you can do this so i remember that that happens every time every time i put something out there's going to be that one person or two or three that say oh you should have done it this way or that way and these days many times i try to say oh well thanks thanks for the feedback and i, I try to leave it very civil yeah. um because it depends of course on who's giving the feedback it yeah. depends on so on so many things so it's like and you're right that it definitely shouldn't discourage because i remember when i put out the ep last year with the healing sound yeah. um i was like i was expecting that hey this is gonna take off it's going to be everywhere it's gonna be played i'm so excited i'm gonna be mm. famous <laughs> And then, mm. <laughs> that was, yo, that thing, yo, that thing hit me real fast. Like, I mean, it it did well. It did decent. Like, it it got traction. A few people um, bought the EP and stuff like that. So that was nice too. But man, my expectations and especially, and the reality. You know, especially when you have a lot of friends that always like, oh, you can sing, go girl, this this, and it's time to purchase. <laughs> It's really? time for me to purchase it. And you know the oh. funny thing is, well, if you use all these distribution companies, right, to to, right. to market your song, they kind of give you a list of like who, like how much you, you sold this. Like I used yeah. to core, right? Yeah, I same. Did. I used to so, so the funny yeah. thing is, you know what what pisses me off is it's just ninety nine cents. It's just a single, but you yeah. just ninety nine cents zero zero two. This person's true. <laughs> <laughs> and in my mind, I'm like, thank you. I know. Thank I you. know. And like, it, after one year, you're like, yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you'll be hearing people say, oh my God, I've been loving yeah. this jam. I've been, okay, bye, <laughs> jam. <laughs> Just bye. Just 
right? Yo, that's real talk. Like, if everyone on my page right now bought you my single, that's or, or on your page right now. <laughs> Do you understand? Like, you know what it's rich too. One dollar times three thousand yeah. five. How many people do I have? Three thousand five hundred three. That's three thousand five hundred three dollars. Do you know yeah. what that money would do in my life? That's 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 enough to cover your single. Do right you understand? There. But yeah. but the thing is, I I noticed that when it comes to your own life or your own purpose, um, people won't see how you see it, and they would just stay mm. by the sidelines, saying, "Let's see if she will blow." When that's you the thing. Blow, oh my that's God. the thing. Do you remember like, that day? I ah, know. Her. <laughs> that went to, and I'm like. Uh, did you buy her song? <laughs> <laughs> That's oh the thing. God. It's it's tough. And I, I was at I was telling you how I was at um the the workshop thing yesterday for musicians and yeah. Lit pointed out something. She one one of the speakers, she said, if your friend starts a fashion label and is selling mm -hmm. apparel, don't message mm -hmm. your friend and say, Yo, like give me a free one. Buy it. Mm -hmm. Like encourage your friend encourage yeah. the people who are around you because yeah. those are the people that you want you know those people in your circle of course i want all the people in my circle to succeed just yeah. as i want to succeed so that we're yeah. all in that part together but we have to support each other yeah. you know is you know buy whether it's from buying each other's music whether it's buy each other's apparel whatever it is that people do like get involved someone yeah. i know she's a she's a designer i have a i have a performance in fe february yeah. i asked her if she could design my um what i'm gonna wear and what she would charge for it because to me it's like why should i go and find another designer who's gonna pay, you know spend i'm gonna spend Jesus. like how much when somebody is trying someone i know is trying to mm -hmm. build this thing for herself you know yeah. so but unfortunately not everyone sees it the same way and you just have yeah, to be I, like i think, thank I think you if, if we first start with the and that's one of the things that i think i and damia Deni in and in and saskatoon Mm. had to connect to because we were like the moment women start supporting fellow women others will not see any reason not to right that's but right. the moment i start saying shade what she was thinking she's not thinking about jesus you know what I don't <laughs> to post that. You, you get that kind of thing and then you start spreading yeah. stuff and it, mm. it's still the same circle that you are expecting that oh you know this person is going to do this this person is going to do that but and some people will even like or so, or support just to see if you will blow or support mm. to see let them not say I do not support this mm. stand. So you really don't know people's motive. But yeah. at the end of the day, you just want to make sure that you're you're at peace and you're loving what you do, like from the yes. bottom of your heart. And you're, absolutely, you're having that fun. It's absolutely. It's I completely agree because after my experience of just not having the best expectations with that EP. I was like, mm -hmm. you know what? Why am I even choosing to do this first place? I chose to do this because it's something I love. This is God's gift. This yeah. is part of my purpose. So why mm -hmm. am I, if, if I truly believe this is part of my purpose, then why am I bothering myself with, oh, this person didn't buy it or this person mm -hmm. didn't, you know, it, might, mm -hmm. it will hurt, but it's like at the same time, it's like the ultimate goal is still, is still where it's at. So yeah. that, that never changed. So that's, that mm -hmm. should be the focus kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I just said, think of it that way that you know what, this is God's gift, and if God gives you a gift, He wants to know how you're gonna use it. He wants to yeah. know how 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 did you what's what's the word? How did you? Uh, there's a word for it. Cult is it cultivate? I guess cultivate yeah, can be the cultivate word. Yeah, it's like yeah. how did you cultivate it? You know, it's like yeah. the story of the the men with the talents. talents. It's like this how, is how, funny. how <laughs> this is the time I'm hearing that story today. <laughs> how how are you cultivating that gift? And that's the way mm. that I see it. Because mm. like, don't deprive yourself of taking advantage of something that of a gift that's freely given because mm. this person said it or that person said that it's mm. going to be tough because mm. life is never meant to be easy we're mm. supposed to go through these trials also it, yeah. it builds that character and yeah. humility oh my yeah. gosh the yeah. type of humility i have right now with music is ridiculous mm. Mm. when i first started i was like yo i'm going to blow in two days but it's like no <laughs> <laughs> No, I skills, <laughs> skills, character. People just just make you humble, like so you humble. Just, you're it, just you know, <laughs> if you know how it could be disappointing, and, and so that we can yeah. wrap up and, and, and finish quickly. One yeah. of the things that also also could break your heart is when you're talking about how your song is this, and a, a friend now says, "Oh, your song is out." Oof. 
or, or oh you have a song do you get so for me you, you just don't yeah. allow what people say get to you at all like yeah i always say that whoever is meant to be in your your life's destiny your life's circle yeah. will always find their way there absolutely you don't have to i was just it. talking like, about that today <laughs> you, you don't have to even disturb yourself so people will just come naturally and yeah. one of the things that i i've noticed is that when god's favor is around your life people that you don't even know be the ones that want to mm. help you and and that favor factor is very, very important. Like mm -hmm. God's favor. Mm -hmm. God's, it's God's very favor important. It's very important. So what, yeah. what would you say will be your um your give to someone to take home today from um mm. your experience so far in the in the music scene? And mm -hmm. how how would you encourage someone that's just about to start up and mm. want and is like, you know what, I don't think this is for me. What would you say mm. to the person? Okay. Um, my encouragement so far in the, from being in the music scene and things like that is that it's a, it's a very long journey. And I think people need to have that mindset of don't go into it with the mindset of wanting to blow. Don't go into it with the mindset of wanting to, to go viral, to get this big shot that's going to transform your life. Mm. Go into it because you, you have an understanding of of what this gift is for you. Like if it means that you have to take some time to discover yourself, do that. Mm. If it means you need to take some time to, you know, to read, to have an understanding, to build confidence, whatever it is that you need to do, take that time. Because mm. when it comes to your purpose, like it's mm. not that you're working in God's time. So there's mm. certain things that have to fall in line for opportunities to happen, for you to mm. meet the right people. And it comes mm. in stages. You mm. can only be given so much at a certain stage. Yeah. And then you do a lot with that. And then mm. when it's the right time to grow, then you do more, you know, with yeah. more with what you're given. So it's like yeah. you have to have that mindset of this this is <laughs> this is a lifestyle. Yeah. You know? And just be open to receive what comes with it. To have a mm. believe in the best. Believe mm. that the best will happen. And just mm. yeah. I pre have have a heart of gratitude too. <laughs> mm, mm, yeah, mm. Being, being grateful. I was listening yeah. to message by Kian Anderson today. He said, "Empty but thankful, even though you mm, feel empty, even wow. though life life throws you on the floor, even though yeah. you're looking at everybody around you be better, and you're in mm. your worst situation, be thankful." And through that process, God doesn't. Um, when the favor of God comes upon your life. Whoever you think has been living the life of productivity will just look mm. very tiny when God's favor just comes upon you. So Absolutely. I think it's a good encouragement to be thankful always, be grateful always. And yeah. um, we love you, <laughs> Love you too, I knew. God bless you. I want to say a big thank you. Thanks for being on the show. Um, yeah, thank you for having me. Finally, have, we're able to make this happen. <laughs> I will have more of you very soon. Sounds but, um, good. But yeah, so for those that will watch this later, um, so Shade, um, do you want to tell us where they can follow you, your YouTube channel, what they, uh, how they can get your music? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can find me on iTunes, Spotify, uh, uh, what's the other one? SoundCloud, either my music through the healing sound or through um, Shade underscore Awele. Um, what else? Yeah, I've, I've got a profile on Spotify as well, so you could follow that if you want to keep up to date with whatever's happening. And what are playlists? Yeah, playlists yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm always open to ideas too. I don't know when it sends me ideas, which I don't, I don't blame them. <laughs> I'll stop bugging you now, don't worry. Yeah, okay. Sounds now, good. <laughs> now I know. I can stop bugging you with all the ideas in my head. Sounds good, yes. All righty. Have right. a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest you of it. You too. Thank you. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.